Hello and welcome. Today I wanted to hop on here to talk about the dark and how we're facing that energy, what it means, um, and just a perspective that my guides brought through about these darker or lower frequencies that we're dealing with on the planet that hopefully will help. Uh, we are moving forward with this energy with the solar eclipse. I want to talk about that a little bit too and kind of how we're shifting. So let's hop in. Okay, so let's get right into it. So I think a lot of us have been dealing with a lot of intensity the past several weeks with these huge eclipses that have been happening, these celestial bodies that have been shifting and moving and interacting with each other. We're having all these solar flares, geomagnetic storms. I mean, I feel like this is just par for the course these days. Um, my guides did talk about how there would be a huge influx of light coming in at this time. And there is, if we look at the Schumann resonance too, it's just constantly spiking. So there's a lot going on. And because of that, it may feel like there's a lot going on inside of us and inside of our bodies and rightfully so. So one of those things may be triggers. We may be feeling like I can't handle people anymore. Um, everything feels so polarized and all this duality and it just feels really intense and it's only ramping up and I don't know how to deal with it. So I've been dealing with my own, you know, facing darkness and uh, own intensity as well. I'm right there with you. And a lot of things coming up to the surface that I'm being asked to look at. So uh, I want to focus a little bit on the messages that have come through as I've been doing my own shadow work and my own diving in. So first and foremost, a lot of us may be experiencing some grief about our our life. Um, maybe things didn't work out the way we wanted them to. Maybe going through a spiritual awakening, we've lost a lot of friends. Maybe we've moved. There's just been a lot of things that have fallen away. And this is definitely true in my case. And I've been looking at some past lifetimes too, where I've dealt with this. And I feel like this grief that may be coming up is here to help propel us forward too. And the transformation of all of these feelings and emotions and the intensity that's coming up, it's here to really put the um, foot on the gas and help us push forward once we kind of understand the lesson that these feelings are bringing. So with this grief, if you feel like you've been through a lot of loss, um, my guides have said, it's time to take that knowledge now of what that gave you. To find the meaning and the lesson in the things that you once had that are no longer present in your life. They were there for a time and now they're not, but it's because it was giving you some richness of feeling and experience. You know, the guides always come through to say, this is just an experience. Every lifetime is us to experiment and have an experience that will strengthen and grow our wisdom, our knowledge of who we are and our soul and what love actually feels like. So in letting that go, in not having those things anymore and experiencing that grief, it shows us how deep we can love, how meaningful life can be, how meaningful things are to us when we have a feeling to it and the beauty of it. It sends us into our depths to understand more about ourselves that I can have all of these things and let them be meaningful to me. And when I don't have them anymore, I can be grateful for them. When things didn't work out the way I wanted or thought they would, I can find meaning in that and how it is helping my soul grow. It's all about experience. It's not about, did it work out the way I wanted it to? Did it go right or did it go wrong? It's not about any of that. We place these precursors on top of that for us because we find a sense of safety in it. But there really isn't safety in it because then we're constantly chasing this thing of, well, I need it to be this way. I want it to be right. I want it to be wrong. I thought it was supposed to go this way and it didn't. And that's okay. We're just here to have an experience. And what's the experience that you are gaining from what your soul has gone through and what your soul has let go of? And the guides came through to say, it is safe to let this go now and move forward, to feel the grief, to process it, to find the meaning in having cared for something in your life or someone. And 
They also said that those things that you once had that are no longer, friendships, homes, things, jobs, whatever it is, they all have their own energy as well. They all kind of have their own soul too, even if it's not a physical thing. And their soul wants you to move forward and be happy. That energy wants you to move on and to grow. And everything in the universe wants this. So don't feel like you have to hang on to things or like hanging on to this thought of why didn't it work out that way? It was supposed to work out the way it was supposed to work out. So your soul could have an experience. And I know we think, oh, well, my soul may have picked this and it planned this and it should have happened that way and it didn't. Something got in the way. I want you to let go of all of that. Yes, we pick a track that we want to be on, but then we come into this planet of free will where everyone is having an experience and their experience, you know, influences our experience and that's part of the greater experience. So allow yourself to find the gratitude and the depth in what once was and how it has helped you get to where you are now. So with this type of experience and loss, you may feel like the dark got in the way. If the dark wasn't acting this way, then this wouldn't have happened. If, you know, the powers that be could just um, be loving, then this wouldn't have been this way. But that's not part of the experience that we signed up for. And while we're here to have an experience and we may be doing our shadow work and recognizing things, and that's part of our experience right now, my guides also came through with this message that sounds so simple, but it really just sunk in for me. They said, the dark is here having an experience too. They're a being and an entity just like we are and they have a soul. And though their soul chose something different, that's their experience. And then my guides showed me like these darker beings and um, I had a lifetime where I was in Lyra and the war happened and that planet got taken over. And when I'm looking at that lifetime, I'm seeing the beings, the reptilian, draconian beings that took over that planet. And I would, had so much anger and grief about that. And my guides showed me these beings having their experience that every time they act in this harsh way, they're coming from this place of pain and they made me feel the pain in their body. It was like this ping of insecurity, this ping of I have to make myself feel better. And they're constantly acting from that place. I'm not excusing that behavior, but I am just saying they don't know any better. If you think about before you went through your awakening, the ways in which you were acting and the cycles that you kept churning in. I know for me, it was just like, man, if I play the victim, then I'll get somebody to give me attention and I'll feel better. And then, then I'll get the love that I need. And it's like, I didn't know any better at that time. And finally, it's like you hit a point where it's like, oh, there's something else here. And I want to let you know that the dark does experience that. They showed me that in each ping of their pain, it's like, oh, I hate this. I, I know there's something else. I know there's something more. They have that, that thought in their head, but they're conditioned because it, they're also making me feel like the dark is controlled by something, even a system, a, a way of being, a thought pattern. They're controlled by something else that's making them act that way. And they don't want to be dark. I'm telling you this, they don't want to be dark. They want to be love. They just don't know how. They think if I can just throw my pain onto somebody else by yelling at them, by name calling, by blaming, by shaming, I'll get them to hold this for me because I've never felt held. And it's like this backwards way of doing things. So when you get triggered by somebody and they're throwing their shit at you, it's them just trying to meet a need for themselves because they don't understand how. And that doesn't mean that we need to hug them and tell them it's okay and that we love them and make them have some sort of relief in the moment. Then they'll keep trying to feed from us. It doesn't mean that we have to attach to them or connect with them at all. But my guides wanted to bring through this realization for us that when 
People in our lives that we feel like are stuck in these darker cycles keep throwing their shit at us. They're trying to feel held, they're trying to feel loved, but they've never experienced a healthy form of that. They don't know how to receive that for themselves because they've always received this lack thereof. Someone else, a parent, throwing their shit at them and they feel like they have to hold their parents' shit so then their shit never gets to be held. So then they try to throw their shit onto us and we have to hold it for them. We don't. So A, we don't have to hold their shit, but also we have to realize this trigger that I'm feeling, we're safe, it's okay. This actually has nothing to do with me. It's just the dark, wanting to not be dark, wanting to not feel that way anymore because they don't want to. They don't want to, but they don't know how else to meet the need. They haven't been shown. But how do we show them? How do we do that? Well, we have to do that for ourselves and not attach to what they're throwing at us. Because when we get triggered and then we come back at them saying, you did this to me, we're triggering in our brain, I want to make them feel the pain of them not loving me. I'm going to let them know how they made me feel. And then we're fighting fire with fire and nothing gets anywhere. So how do we detach? We have to realize it's not us. It's them trying to get a need met in this way where it's not going to be met. And I have to separate myself from it and step back into my experience. Oh, I'm experiencing somebody trying to get a need met through darker methods. It's not going to work. It, it works momentarily. And then they, they, have, they just keep running in that cycle. They have to keep going back to that method. So the dark is learning through their pain. And it may seem like they're not because they keep doing the same things over and over again, but they're getting messages through their pain and it may be unconscious, but their soul is learning through it. It's just taking a little bit longer for them. And the more that we can separate from it and detach from it, actually the faster their journey is gonna move. The more we can let them be in their shit and have to hold it for themselves, the sooner they're gonna be like, this isn't working. And through this dark, operating in these cycles and kind of interrupting the experience that we wanted to have. Oh, I want my life to go this way and then this thing comes in and it interrupts it. And then I maybe have to pivot or I have to let go of this thing and I have to deal with grief. And there's this benefit to that where the dark is teaching us how deep we can love. That's what the lower densities do. It's pulling us into this understanding that we wouldn't be able to grasp in the higher densities. Your pain is showing you a deeper way to love and care for yourself. Our soul craves this type of knowledge. That's why earth can be a coveted place to go because we wanna learn that depth of love. And while we may hate the dark and wanna get away from it, it helps us learn that that ping of pain. Why can't I be loved here? Why can't other people love me here? And we have to realize, well, it's not for other people to do, it's for me. And I know that sounds so cliche, but that's the thing that the dark is learning. And trust me, they are feeling it. Some may be more unconscious to it than others, but things are transforming. And through this message, I feel like I've developed a little bit more compassion for people who are in their darkness, who are wrapped up in it, who aren't in this understanding of how to hold this space for themselves, of how to let go of holding other people's pain. They're trying to get a need met. They want to feel held. They want to feel loved. And so when they throw their stuff on you, they're like, please hold this for me. If you can hold this for me, maybe I'll feel loved. But then that just triggers our pain and we want to come back at them. Let me show you what you did to me. And it's never about that. We're all just trying to get needs met. So how can we meet that for ourselves? So take that understanding of the next time you get triggered by somebody. It's them just trying to get a need met. 
And can you let that go and detach from it? And you're not here to meet that need for them. It's not your job. But can you have compassion for them needing that need to be met? I feel like, of course. Does it make me want to be around the person, though? No. <laughs> I don't think we have to. But we can certainly separate ourselves energetically. I do think this viewpoint offers a little compassion. The dark doesn't necessarily want to be dark anymore. It's kind of enslaved to this system, and they have to pull that system out of their bodies, just like we did. We're pulling that that old earth system out of our body and operating in this new way. And I think this is a huge part of it, seeing the system for what it actually is and how it operates and realizing there were once parts of us that were riding in that darkness too. And we were able to pull ourselves out and we shouldn't go attack people like, well, I did it. So you do it too. <laughs> no, we need to be able to be like, all right, I'm gonna let them be in it but I understand where they're coming from. I understand why. And then through that, we can give compassion to ourselves and let ourselves know this isn't about me. Their shit has nothing to do with me. Their anger, their frustration, their resentment has nothing to do with me. It's them trying to meet a need to be loved and to be held and to not want to be enslaved and entrapped in these darker cycles anymore. They just don't know how. So we kind of show them how by being the example, by not getting triggered anymore, by not getting attached, by stepping into our purpose and our mission and loving ourselves through it and letting the grief carry us and transform us into feeling a deeper depth of love for ourselves and the things that did hold us. Okay, as we move forward, these eclipses have just passed. Um, the energy is still really strong and we're still in this Mercury retrograde. I think we're still working out some of the kinks from this huge amount of energy that has come in and continues to. So really be patient with yourself. Take action when you feel guided to and really we're working out the kinks of clarity in our system. We're gaining clarity. They may have been things that have come up during this time where we felt like, I gotta do this, or I shouldn't do this, or I need to feel safe, and da da da. We may have felt all over the place, and it's settling a little bit more now. Our nervous systems are settling, so keep finding that safety in your nervous system. So I wanna talk about this other thing. We may be feeling like we have a lot of resistance resistance to stepping onto our path. I know I have felt this. I'm like, I know I need to get going with this. I know I need to do this thing. And it's just like, oh, I don't want to. I, I don't know if this is right. And we're kind of discombobulated. Why isn't this working? Those sorts of things. We're just working out some kinks right now. But that resistance, I do think, <laughs> I know I just talked about the dark and having compassion for it, but I do think there are energies here that don't want us to step into the light. And I think a lot of that resistance may come through because it's like, ah, it's outside of our comfort zone. It's, um, you know how we kind of avoid doing shadow work. We avoid diving in and getting to those deeper levels of ourselves because it takes work. We have to look at our pain. We have to go in there and we have to do all of that work. And that's kind of what's happening with this resistance is it's taking a little bit of work for us to pull ourselves up onto this timeline and stay there, to pull this new earth into existence. It's taking work and effort a little bit for us to be able to step into this new phase. Just like the butterfly when it's coming out of the cocoon or, you know, the baby pushing through the birth canal. It's like work. They got to kind of like... Ugh, weasel their way out and we're kind of in that phase right now we're like pulling ourselves out of it and there's this pressure and I think there's resistance because it's like oh this is like effort I have to face some things now I really have to do it like it's actually a reality and I think that resistance is just releasing that fear so the more we can step through it 
and tell ourselves it's safe. I'm safe to do this. Um, I need to do this. I'm here to build. I'm here to be that spiritual warrior. I'm going to push through and I'm going to create the thing I'm here to create. I'm going to step in and face the thing I need to face. I'm going to say the thing I need to say. I'm going to stand up in the way I need to stand up. So if you're feeling that resistance right now, we're working out those kinks. Keep giving yourself those pep talks to move forward. If things aren't quite working out the way you want, all right, what's the lesson here? How do I need to pivot? Maybe it's supposed to start smaller and I grow from there. So really be present and patient with yourself right now. If you need to cocoon a little bit, it's okay for these next couple of weeks. But it's go time. We're going. We're stepping in. We are pulling ourselves out of that cocoon now. It's the birth. So I just wanted to come on here and give you that encouragement to keep going. Your resistance is that next level that's butting up against the level that you're on. We just have to release. We have to say, okay, we have to keep saying yes to it. And when we're not clear, get in meditation, go in nature. This eclipse energy that came through with a solar eclipse, my guides have told me it's about clarity. If you need it, ask for it. Ask for it to show up in your daily life through signs and synchronicities. Ask for that thought or that epiphany to drop into your body. Ask for it to come through in a visual and meditation or a feeling or through a conversation with a friend or whatever it may be. Ask for that clarity and you'll feel it in your body when you know it's right. Keep getting clearer on what you're headed in and where you're going and what you're creating. It's so important right now. The resistance is the new level coming in. Whoosh. Just push it, push it aside, push through. When we push through that resistance, we're pulling ourselves out of the cocoon. So keep steady with yourself, love on yourself, have compassion for this journey, keep moving forward. You know, we're, we're the tortoise, not the hare. And the more that we can just be present on our journey, rest when we need to rest, give ourselves that compassion, meditate, then push forward in our creation, finding all of that balance. It's not always easy and it's okay. Sovereignty wasn't meant to be easy, but it was meant to be rewarding, rewarding for our soul. I want to say that again. Sovereignty isn't meant to be easy. It's meant to be rewarding. Our soul came here to claim that. So don't let the ugh of I don't, I don't want to do this get in the way. What if I just sat down and chipped away at it a little bit? All right, I'm going to force myself to sit down and do it. It's like working out. You wake up in the morning and it's like, you know, six o'clock in the morning and it's still dark out and you're like, I don't want to work out but you do it anyways, and you feel better after you do it. That's what the resistance feels like right now. It's like, all right, I'm just gonna do it. And I'm gonna be happy I did once I get through to the other side. I'm gonna look back and be like, thank God I pushed through this resistance. <sighs> Take a deep breath. It feels so good. <sighs> All right, I want to leave you with that a little bit shorter of a transmission today, but I feel like we're getting there. Again, this isn't supposed to be an easy path, but it can be flowing when we just allow it. We allow it to be what it is. Okay, resistance is there. I'm going to allow it and I'm going to just find my power and step through it. Oh, okay, grief is showing up. I'm going to allow it. I'm going to let it flow through and let it transform me. And have this deeper feeling of love and meaning that wants to come through in my life. Oh, this person is triggering me. They're throwing their darkness at me. They want to be held. I'm going to notice that this is a need. They're trying to be met. It has nothing to do with me. Okay, I'm going to allow it. And I'm going to find my separation from it and step back into compassion for myself. And compassion for the fact that they don't feel loved and they're trying to get a need met right now. All of this. 
It becomes easier when we step into this allowance, when we're resistant to how things are happening, it's just making it harder for ourselves. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Find movement in your body. When we're tight in our body, things tend to be tight in our lives, whether that's through somatic movement or yoga or just like shaking the body out. Find that looseness in the body. It'll be reciprocated and it will reverberate into the rest of your life. Stretching, whatever it may be, breath work. Just find that looseness and that flow in your body and in this path. It's not meant to be easy. It's meant to be rewarding. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Leave some comments in the comment section. Let me know how you're doing. I love hearing from you. And uh, we're on this journey together. So I'm right there with you with all this intensity. And um, we're going to get through it. And it's going to be freaking incredible. All right. I'll talk to you soon.